Hey everyone, how are we doing today? It is Thursday, May 14, and Thursday is Pioneer. And wanted to go over today's deck dump. Uh, we had 27 decks appear today. 25 of them used companions. Uh, the two holdouts were a uh, Lotus Breach deck and a Demir Inverter. Uh, there were two in Demir Inverter decks in today's dump, one with Yorion, one without. Um, but we saw 15 Yorion decks, 6 with Lurus, and then Zerda, Kahira, Obosh, and Gigantha all showed up one time each. So uh, definitely it's a companion-driven format. Um, some decks I wanted to highlight here are things that we've been starting to see show up in the metagame a little bit. One of which is this Bant Midrange um, by Utia. It is mostly a control deck, but it's a little creature heavy. So I'm calling it a mid-range deck. It's probably going to show up as bank control in on Goldfish, however they want to name it. But uh, it's a little, it's a little uh, mid-rangey here, uh, in my opinion. But it's an interesting build. Um, Thraben Inspector is just a great card. Uh, Pat Murph had something I wanted to bring up. Uh, so this is an Orzov, or I'm sorry, Esper control deck. Have not seen that in a while. So interesting to see where control... This this particular deck dump felt very control heavy. Um, there were a couple of different blue-white control decks, Bant, Esper, um, Definitely feeling control heavy, and with all the Yorion decks, that, that kind of fits the pattern there. Uh, Gretorp had... Uh, this is Esper Doom Foretold. So I mentioned in the metagame video yesterday that there's two versions of this deck floating around. There's an Orza version and an Esper version. And this is the Esper one. Uh, it's splashing blue for Teferi and Supreme Verdict and Omen of the Sea I think are the only blue cards and then of course you've got sideboard stuff with Narset and um, another Supreme Verdict and uh, Mystical Dispute so just a little tweak on the uh, the prior Orzov Doom foretold control deck so something to uh, watch for there might fit your play style a little better Adam Hinn has an interesting little Lurus-driven mono-white humans deck, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, we've got Charming Prince, we've got Dauntless Bodyguard, we've got Dranith Magistrate here to kind of stop the companion shenanigans. Um, Freebooter for a little disruption, Knight of the White Orchid for ramp and threats. Kithion is a pretty solid... Uh, aggressive early drop. Thalia's Lieutenant, Thraben Inspector, some great humans. Return of the ranks for a little uh, uh, resilience. Some removal in Dire Tactics and Fatal Push and Dead Weight. So interesting little build here. Uh, if you're looking for something on the aggressive side that's off the beaten path, I would take a look at this one. And this is kind of, I think, the new hotness in well, almost the new hotness. There's two decks, I think, that are really starting to rise in Pioneer. This is one of them. This is Jeskai Luka Fires. We've talked about it a little bit before. This is the port of the deck that's currently running rampant in Standard. Uh, using uh, Fires of Invention, Luka, to ramp, to ramp out, basically, Agent of Treachery and start stealing stuff. And then using Yorion to blink the agent to ferry to bounce it back. You know, there's a variety of different ways you can reuse agents. Shark Typhoons here either can cycle for instant speed uncounterable blockers or um, to start accruing some board presence late in the game once you've, once you've got command and, and are looking for a win con. Um, interesting... Uh, approach and seeing how the deck has ported back into Pioneer. 
And then SSJ Vega had something I wanted to bring up. So we've seen Mono White Devotion Splashing Blue. Uh, Goldfish calls it Azorius Devotion. This would be called Orzov Devotion. It's Mono White Devotion Splashing Black. And it allows for, I think, a little bit more interactivity on an aggressive slant. So you've got things like Kunaros and Oath of Kaya and uh, let's see, what was the other? Yeah, Kaya herself, her Planeswalker uh, version to kind of be a little more aggressive in how you're interacting, more proactive as opposed to reactive uh, that the, the blue splash somewhat provides. So interesting take on the archetype here and worth watching. It started to pop up a little bit. Now, the other deck I wanted to show, and I forgot to... Uh, yeah, here it is. Gobrian. Gobrian? Yeah. Has, uh, this is the deck that kind of just popped up in Pioneer lately. It's a Lurus driven Jund deck. Uh, the, the threat profiled Grim Flayer, Croxa, Scavenging Ooze for Graveyard Hate, Seder Wayfinder to maybe help that Croxa out. Because Croxa isn't great if you're casting the front half. Croxa is really good when you can escape it. So this is going on those lines. Um, there's some interesting push-pulls in the mana base because Scavenging Ooze is a very green-heavy card. Crocs is a very black and red-heavy card. Um, so it's definitely focused on the black-red side. Uh, but it's a deck to watch. Uh, Unbridled Growth here does help with that fixing, right? So deck to watch. This one has been showing up a lot. And... It'll be interesting to see how the metagame develops and how this deck ends up surviving the format. That's about it for today. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you do like what I'm doing here, do please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know when my next video is coming. And that's about it for today. Tomorrow we will be back with Modern. Thanks a bunch and talk to you soon. Stay safe out there. Bye-bye.